Before the days of specialization, top-level athletes routinely played multiple sports through high school and sometimes into college. Barbara Fox did that and more when she enrolled at Campbell in 1975. Not only did she star for the Campbell basketball and softball teams, but she also played on the short-lived field hockey squad. After earning accolades in two sports and earning outstanding female honors twice, she took a teaching and coaching job at Pinecrest High School and stayed for 38 years. Barbara didn't play volleyball at Campbell. She graduated seven years before the Fighting Camels added that sport, but she became one of the most successful high school volleyball coaches in the state's history. And she didn't just turn in her sneakers, cleats, and glove after graduation, but she went on to become one of the top slow pitch softball players in the nation. In recognition of her outstanding career, Barbara is a member of the 2024 Campbell Athletics Hall of Fame induction class, marking the fourth hall in which she has been so honored. My name is Stan Cole, class of 1987, and this is our next installment of Tales from the Creek, where we visit with people who made this place special over the years. I'm delighted today to be joined by former three-sport standout, Barbara Fox. Welcome to Tales from the Creek, Barbara, and thanks for taking the time to be with us. Well, thank you, Stan. I am so glad to have this opportunity to come here and be on this beautiful campus. It's totally different from what it was in 1978. Well, things will change, won't they? But some things stay the same. But, Barbara, what I'm interested in to start also off with today is how did this all begin? Tell us what it was like growing up in uh, Lee County and how you got started playing sports. Okay, getting started playing sports. Well, in, in the house where I was raised, the three boys were born first, and I was the first female in the house. So, of course, I went out and played with the boys all the time. So I learned how to throw the rocks up and hit the ball with a stick, and not necessarily a ball, it was a rock. So I learned how to do that, and then it became easy to toss the ball up and hit, it, hit the, a ball. But actually, I'm right-handed, but when I tossed the ball, I couldn't toss it with the left hand. So I had to toss it with the right hand and swing the stick with the left. So I bat left-handed, <laughs> which is, is cool because I get closer to the first base. Absolutely. I don't have to run as fast. Absolutely. Who were some of your favorite teams, Did favorite players that you emulated? Well, now softball wasn't that big for me at that time. Mm -hmm. It was basketball. Mm -hmm. So being the first girl in there and having my other cousins and my sister in the house, well, they stayed in the house and learned how to cook. I didn't stay in the house. I stayed outside. So when basketball came around, I would go across to the neighborhood, and most of the guys would, and we would play basketball. But I would play with my older cousins and her husband, and he was big. His name was Holden Ross. Every time I tried to shoot, he would block my shot. So I was like, I have to find out a way to get to the basket without him blocking my shot. So Charlie Scott was the big person at Carolina at that time. So I would watch what Charlie Scott did, and I would go to the house and shoot in the, in the basket, and I keep shooting and dribbling. And you know it was sand and rocks, so I had to learn how to dribble and control the ball. So by the time Charlie Scott was big, I could do everything Charlie Scott could do with the ball except dunk. And then Holland didn't block my shot anymore. That's amazing. Besides school and sports, um, what else did you were you involved in as a youth? Did you have any jobs or anything else like that? <laughs> yes, I, I had to work at a restaurant with my mom, mm -hmm. third shift. But, you know, with a young teenager, and being up at third shift in the morning, oh, about five or six o'clock, I was so ill because I was so sleepy. I didn't need to have that job. But I also worked at a factory, at what's called Federal Spinning at that time. Mm -hmm. I worked there, and I would work there third shift because I was going to school at Central Carolina. So I would work third shift, then I would go to school at eight o'clock, but I had to take my pillow and, and go to sleep because I was sleepy. But I still kept my GPA up. Oh, my goodness. I can't imagine um, when you see uh, students 
rolling out of bed and going to breakfast in their pajamas or something <laughs> like that. Uh, that uh, none of them are, that are at Campbell these days are working a third shift job, and in, in to my uh, knowledge. Barbara, what drew you to Campbell and Bowie's Creek? Well, I was playing basketball at Central Carolina. Mm -hmm. It's basically recreation. With Rosalind Rayford, she was playing basketball here at Campbell. So she talked Coach Peabody to come and watch me play. So when she came and watched me play, she offered me a scholarship to come to Campbell. And that's how I got to Campbell College at that time. Mm -hmm. Were you a basketball player first or softball player, or when did you start playing organized softball? In the eighth grade. Mm -hmm. In the eighth grade, I started playing softball and basketball in eighth grade. I played at Greenwood High School. Mm -hmm. In the ninth grade, I played on the ninth grade team and on the varsity team. So I learned how to dribble and pass the ball and learned how to shoot pretty well because I would practice shooting when I was at home. I would practice shooting my free throws in the dark with my eyes closed. So I could learn how to shoot and shoot well. When it was daytime, it was easy to shoot. Oh, my goodness. How did you become involved with the Campbell field hockey team, which was only around for a couple of years? Field hockey was not my ideal sport. We had to play that to get in shape for basketball. So we would practice for two hours, and then it was close to time for the cafeteria to close. Mm -hmm. And we had to sprint to the cafeteria before it closed so we could eat dinner. I don't think I like field hockey very much. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Barbara, what are some of your best memories of your time on campus, just in general? <laughs> Hanging out with the teams. Uh, mm -hmm. That was so much fun with the girls. You, you get to know them, get to know them personally, and we just had a good time hanging out with them. And then working camps, I enjoy working the basketball camps and we, where everybody didn't, but I always played tricks on the college coaches that came in and worked camp. I won't tell you what I did, but it was surely a lot of fun. One of the coaches left campus and she didn't have one of her shoes. And s somewhere in Bowie's Creek, that shoe might still be sitting in a corner. <laughs> Perhaps. Oh, that's fun stuff that teenagers do. So, Barbara, Wanda Watkins shared a story with me about your ability to jump up <laughs> and ki kick the chandelier in the lobby of Old Treat Dormitory. Tell us about that a little bit. Well, I had a very good vertical, but I also took karate classes before I got here. So I was pretty decent in karate. I even fought in a, a, in a tournament. That was a mistake because I had just worked third shift, and then I, they talked me into going to a tournament, to, and I had to fight. And I was just uh, had been in the sport for about three months, but I was already a green belt. But I came to that tournament, and I had to fight a brown belt who had been taking it for years. Mm -hmm. But that was fun. I learned a lot from there. But I did do a kata, and I did win third place in doing a, a kata. But in the gym, I was doing a flying snap kick, which you, I, with a good vertical and a high snap, it was easy to do that. Oh, my gracious. Uh, did you continue with your karate, or have you uh, continued any sort of those practices through the day, through the years? Not now, but I did after I left uh, Kimmel, I still took some lessons. I went to, uh, went, uh, went to, where did I go? Winston Salem, mm -hmm. and took classes on another teacher, and learned how to f do street fighting. So that was different. That was fun. I enjoyed that too. You work third shift. You played uh, softball and basketball. You took karate. You had a, a you know, honor roll GPA. How did you find time to do it all, Barbara? Well, I didn't have to learn how to cook. <laughs> that was a big thing because I was always outside. And the problem is I still don't cook, but my sister cooked very well. She even cooked uh, for me this weekend, and she always cooked when she come in town. So she cooked whatever I wanted, and so she cooked me lasagna for this weekend of a salad. So all my cousins, first cousins, they learned how to cook, and my nephew is a chef. Chavez, I know I w would bring him down here when I was playing at Campbell. 
but he's a chef, so I didn't feel that it was necessary for me to learn how to cook because my mom cooked for me too, and my grandmother. And every member of the team has their role, correct? And your role was not to cook, your role was to compete. Definitely, if everybody in my family know I don't cook. <laughs> Barbara, tell us a little bit about your coaches while you were here at Campbell um, in, in softball and in, in uh, basketball. And what were they like to play for? Oh, my basketball coaches uh, was fun. It was fun playing. I, 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 lo I loved – the thing is, it didn't seem like work to me. It was just – fun. I enjoyed playing. So my first coach, she was kind of hard, but she made us stay on task. The only thing I hated was when we had to get up and do a six o'clock practice in the morning. Mm -hmm. I was not fun to be around at all. I hate getting up early, but I can stay up to three or four o'clock and I'm good. But early in the morning is not my thing. But Miss Peabody was, she was challenging us. I had a great time, and then Miss Clary came along, and she did a good job with us as well. We worked hard, we did strength training, and when we were in that old gym, you know, those stairs and all that, we had to run up and down those stairs for 30 minutes before we even started practice. So, you know, at the beginning of the season, we were running people out of the gym. Barbara, you touched on this a little bit uh, earlier about uh, trying to, uh, to to shoot over your uncle, but despite standing five foot four is what you were listed, you <laughs> yes. played forward and averaged 16 points and more than eight rebounds a game. Mm -hmm. How does someone that size get so many rebounds? Well, one thing, I was quicker than everybody in there because they were a lot bigger. Mm -hmm. And I was, I had a good vertical, and I had a lot of hang time when I took the shot. So when I jumped and shot, they were already coming down, so nobody was in front of me. So that made it easy, but having a good vertical, and that was through my strength training too. We did things to help our vertical, and that's what helped me, being quicker, able to shoot without facing the basket. That, that it made it easy for me. Barbara, you've been a regular visitor to campus over years, and you touched mm -hmm. on it when you walked in. Can you explain to, the, to our listeners the differences between Bowie's Creek and Campbell College when you got here and the campus that we see today? Oh, the people now can never understand how good they have it. Playing in the gym that we played in, no air, uh, not as big. Campus is a lot smaller, but, you know, I enjoyed that small atmosphere because you get to know most of the people on campus. Mm -hmm. And at 12 o'clock at night, you could still ride your bike on campus and nothing would happen. Mm -hmm. Nothing ever happened on campus. So on nice nights, you could walk around and enjoy the, the moon and the stars and just have fun. It was a lot smaller now, the facilities now are a lot more than that it was back then. And I go to the gym, and I'm like, hmm, these athletes don't understand how good they have it from where we've been and where we started from. Barbara, the women's basketball program at Campbell has such an incredible alumni following. Why do you think that is, and what keeps all these former teammates so close through the years? I think it's love for the sport and, and the love you have for each other, the, your teammates, which you played with. And the girls that you see when you come, they are so welcoming and loving when I come to visit and we do come for our alumni night. It's good to see the young girls that have grown into women and have their families, and they still enjoy the sport, and they enjoy coming back to Camel University now. Barbara, you've had a front row seat for the growth of women's athletics uh, in, this, in this country. Title IX's played a major role in that uh, for female athletes, coaches, and administrators, and, and the opportunities for them. How have you per personally seen that growth over your career? It has been overwhelming for ladies now to play the sport. You know, 
Back then, we didn't have very many opportunities. Basketball, field hockey, of course, you know, you, you said that ba- volleyball didn't even start here mm-hmm. until the 80s. So I was gone then because it's the 70s, 80s when I graduated. The girls now have so many different opportunities. They can even sell themselves now to even make money to play their sports. I wish they had it back then. I could have used the money back then. But now they have it, and they have different opportunities. They, have, they can get videotape so the college coaches can see what talent's out there, and they, if they will match the team or the players that they're looking for. Uh, the girls have so many camps and so many people that came my time that are teachers now to teach them the sport of basketball. Back then, you didn't have that many camps. You had a few, but now you have camps everywhere. So the girls can learn how to play. You can have a, a, professor, a personal coach to teach you how to play the sport. Uh, so those things you didn't have by, back then. Now you can watch TV and watch a video and see how to play the game and learn everything about the game now. We didn't have that as strongly back then. And one point that Wanda Watkins has made to me um, over the years, too, is that, like you, um, you looked up to Charlie Scott. Mm -hmm. She was very similar. ACC basketball, men's basketball in particular, Mm -hmm. was on television, and that's who your heroes were. Now a eight-year-old girl can turn on the television and watch the WNBA, and she can turn it on ESPN every Sunday afternoon this time of year and watch South Carolina or some of the other great basketball teams or come and watch Division I basketball here in Buies Creek. Uh, those opportunities now are different because of Title IX and the growth and the, the pioneers like you and Coach Watkins. It's been fun watching the growth and seeing that now women can play pro basketball. So their career can continue when they love the sport. And then because of their love for the sport and the work that they have done to get better, now they can get paid a little money. Not as much as the men, but hopefully one day to get a lot closer than it is. But they do have another level that they can play in the United States rather than going overseas to play. So following graduation, you take a job at Pinecrest High School. 726 victories, two state titles. You didn't play that sport in college. What were some of the keys to um, being successful as a volleyball coach, Barbara? Well, you know, when I, when I first started coaching volleyball, I had no clue about volleyball. Like you said, I didn't play it. We just played it as recreation. So I had to go to camps and learn and go to other coaches to learn but when I went to my first camp and the person was teaching I had no clue what she was talking about my beginning of learning so much more about volleyball was when coach Terry Davis came to be my assistant coach and eventually my co-coach because he had played he had seen and played with worked with Terry Pettit and Terry Pettit was the coach at Nebraska at that time who was winning so many national championships. So he knew and he taught me everything about the game. And we went to camps and he learned me, taught me how to run a camp. So that helped out. And because he was so good friends with Terry Pettit at Nebraska, in 92, 92, we took our girls out to Nebraska for a camp for a week. And what we did, uh, Coach Davis had – Coach Pettit to have the girls spend the night, spend the week with the other girls from the team. So they got to visit and learn those parents and spend the week with other people. Oh, that was so much fun. But driving out there, we had a brand new van from Pinecrest at that time. So we drove out there and drove back. The driving was kind of hard. But the experience, yeah, I couldn't beat the experience. Through that camp in Terry Davis, I learned the sport. I already knew strength training because I had learned that. And I went to camps for strength training too, went out to Tennessee. So I add strength training to all my sports for my girls. Mm -hmm. 
that was one thing when I took the job at Pinecrest that I, I wanted, well, I asked that we had to have a strength training program for the girls. That's the only way we can compete with everybody else. In addition to volleyball, you coached basketball and <laughs> softball. Was your approach similar to all three sports? How did how was it different? Obviously, there's different skills and different strategies, but mm -hmm. and how was it the same? The same with the footwork, the skill level, the basics footwork patterns are the same. Volleyball and basketball mm -hmm. are the same. At that time, I worked with Coach James Moore. He was the head coach, women's coach at Pinecrest High School, and he took me on as the ninth grade coach. I didn't stay at the ninth grade coach very long. He moved me up to work with him. So I was the defensive coach. And he had already won a state championship himself, I think, in 77. So when I came along and we worked hard and hard, we had tremendous athletes at that time. <laughs> I mean, tremendous athletes. So after taking the girls for volleyball, we had most of the same girls that played basketball. So in 92, we won volleyball state championship in the same year we won the basketball state championship uh, so that was fun and again it was basically the same girls that played both sports so that made them better and they were already prepared to play basketball because they were already in shape from volleyball you've mentioned terry davis and some others who are some of the people that have helped you along the way Oh, so many people. I even came down here for Wanda Watkins to uh, get some information about basketball, mm -hmm. some more drills and things I want to run with my girls. I spent a lot of time with Kay Yao mm -hmm. before she passed. I worked her camp. I worked Kimmel's camp. I worked Wake Forest camp. So I did went to a lot of camps to learn the sports. But I already knew softball. I, I played a lot of softball. At Kimball, I played, in the, in the summer, I could play 100 tournaments, from uh, 100 games, because I played every day and on the weekend. So that was easy. But learning the skill of basketball, I, from high school, I learned the basics. And from watching Charlie Scott, I learned how to do extra things with the ball. And then working with the coaches that I worked with, uh, Terry Pettit for Nebraska for volleyball, Terry Davis for basketball and volleyball, and James Moore with basketball. So I've had opportunities to work with a lot of different coaches, and it's been fun. I even had the opportunity to go to a camp where the coach from Tennessee was there, who has passed, and the coach from Mississippi was there. So it's been a learning situation, and I'm still learning. I still watch volleyball on TV and see what kind of drills that they're running, uh, go to the game, a basketball game, and see what they're running. If anything that I can use to help my teams, then I try to use it. Barbara, these days the grass always seems to be greener on the other side of the fence. Mm -hmm. You chose to stay at one school for 38 years. <laughs> Tell us some of the reasons why you went to Pinecrest and then you stayed there for your entire teaching career. Well, when before I graduated, I had a job offer already at Union Pines, which is in the same county. Mm -hmm. uh, when I did my student teaching, I had a job in Lee County, rotating from school to school. But my thing was, in order to teach, I wanted to coach. So... Pinecrest offered me the coaching opportunities. So that was my choice because I could coach. I didn't know I was going to have to coach all three sports for women, <laughs> but it was a learning situation. I enjoyed it, and I had fun. Barbara, you've worked with young people um, for years and years now. What advice would you give to a young lady who wants to compete at the college level? You have to work hard. You have to put in extra time if you want to be good at anything. No matter what it is, you have to put in the extra time. But before you do all and any of that, you have to pray. Pray. And you have to put God first. If you put God first, and he will lead your path, and your path will get stronger. 
long as you stay within the path of the plans that he has for you. But that would always help. Uh, that part would help you through the strength training. Be open to learning, learning. Always try to learn from each and every person that you that becomes a part of your life because everything is a learning situation. If you begin to know more than your coach, then you're pretty much done at that point. You have to be able to listen and do what your coaches ask you to do. And if you work hard, listen, try to do the best you can each and every day. Try not to complain so much. Do a little bit of extra strength training on your own. Do extra work on your own. That will help you get there. Is that advice any different for what you would say to a current college athlete? If you were going to go talk to a Campbell volleyball, softball, or basketball player um, to this afternoon, for instance, or was that about the same? It's about the same. Work hard. Put God first. Work hard. And I always tell my girls in high school, look, you have plenty of time to date your boyfriends. You need to leave them alone right now because you got to get your studying done. That's number one because it's a student athlete, not just an athlete. Grades come second. God is first or whoever you pray to. That's first. And then you got to spend a lot of time in your sport. Now, we were in practice for two hours, sometimes strength training at 30 minutes. So now at the school, you already don't have three hours gone. You got to go home and get some studying done. You don't have a whole lot of time to stay on that phone or spend time with your boyfriend. But you always have time later on. Barbara, tell us about your, your softball career. Instead of taking the summers off, you were traveling around the country for years and continuing to play a game that you love. How did that start? And then it's gone on till just recently, correct? Yes, yes. I, it started in high school. I, I could hit the ball because of throwing up the rocks and hitting it with mm -hmm. a stick. I was fast. I had a very good arm, so I could throw the ball. I could hit the ball out of the park and run, and I could continue to do that. Uh, I've had so many opportunities to play, and I've had sponsors when I first started playing, so it didn't cost anything to play. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, you know, they pay for your room, pay for your food. So that was easy to travel, and I've had the opportunity to travel all over the United States to play softball. Puerto Rico, Hawaii a couple of times, Texas, Tennessee, Florida several times, Arizona, uh, oh, Virginia. I've just been everywhere, Alabama. So my vacations was playing softball, and, and it was fun to me, just getting up and going to the field and playing, and the camaraderie you have with the women that you play with. And they're all competitive, and I like the competitive nature because most of them played in college just like I played in college. The teams that I played with, most of the ladies played in college. So the team was very good, and we had fun, and we won a lot. And I played co-ed, too, with, uh, with the guys. I had the opportunity to play with guys that were really good and huge, huge, because they played college football, some of the guys we played with. And... Got to travel a lot with them because we went to California, played with them, and we won all the time playing with co-ed. And we had a lot of girls that played uh, Division I softball. So we played at the top of the line softball, at the top of the line co-ed, and I always just had fun playing. And like I said, the, the camaraderie you have with your teammates, and you look forward to seeing them and being with them on the weekends because we never practiced with them because everybody's from everywhere. Mm -hmm. So we didn't practice. Our coaches said at the beginning, you need to hit 50 balls during the week. And that's all we had to do and come out and see everybody on the weekend and play. Barbara, what's the secret for staying so active and so vibrant, you know, as we get into our 60s? <laughs> Uh, six is yes, but close to seventy. So I won't try to say that out loud. But anyway, uh, still walking. I start walking more than lifting. I I used to lift heavy, a lot of heavy weights. But now I do light weight. Uh, 
dumbbell workout. I have my own workout since I taught strength training to girls. I don't need anybody to tell me how to do it, but I, I do try to get more information every now and again. But I still live, and I walk, and I still go out and throw sometimes, but since I had surgery on the shoulder, I have to wait till it get back in shape before I can play again. Barbara, on January 27th, you'll be inducted into the Campbell Athletics Hall of Fame. You're already a member of the North Carolina High School Athletic Association, United States Slow Pitch Softball, and National Senior Softball Hall of Fame. What do these honors mean to you? <laughs> it means that I've worked hard and didn't realize that you could get accolades for just having fun. <laughs> so I am so honored that I'll be recognized for something I enjoyed doing and just thought it was just having fun. And when I first started getting these awards, I'm like, I didn't even know they did stuff like this. I was just having fun and enjoying what I did and, and thanking for all the blessings that God allowed me to have. But it's an honor. I am humble that I would be recognized to be in another Hall of Fame, especially at Campbell University. Barbara, it's obvious you're the kind of person who likes to stay busy. What has made you decide to continue coaching volleyball now in the middle school level in Southern Pines? Now, that is a story. When I was coaching high school, I didn't even want to deal with my ninth grade players. I'm like, gosh, I can't do this. But I was sitting at home doing my thing, going to the gym, working out a couple of hours a day, three days a week. Then I got a call from one of my ex-players that they were, going, they were working at St. John Paul II. I was asked to come there and coach. I'm like, no way am I going down there to do any more coaching. Mm -hmm. Then a couple of weeks later, I got another call from someone else. And I, I get me thinking about it. Then I got another call, and I said, okay, okay, I'll, I'll just do this. And then I got a call from the principal that was at Pinecrest to coach a team in Lee County. So I coach a team in the fall and then a team in the spring. But when COVID came along, I had to cut the one in Lee County because it was way too many girls, about 60 girls coming out, mm -hmm. and you couldn't keep but a few. And it was a time my mother lives with me, so I couldn't afford to bring anything into the house. So I dropped the team from Lee County and still step, stayed with the team in Southern Pine, St. John Paul. Two, month ago, two months ago, you were among hundreds of teammates, players, coaches, alumni, family, and friends in attendance when Wanda Watkins Court at Gore Arena was dedicated. The gymnasium at Pinecrest High School bears your name. <laughs> what do these honors mean to pioneers like you and Wanda? It makes you feel appreciated for all the time you spent in the gyms, coaching, watching, listening to parents, listen to the girls, trying to motivate them to be, become young, good young ladies. Uh, it, it seems like you are appreciated for what you did. Finally, Barbara, can you put into words what Campbell University and the Bowie's Creek community mean to you? Now, how can you put that in words when that was your beginning, your career for teaching and coaching and something that you love? It has been a blessing. I thank God for putting this path in my direction and putting the people in my life that made this a easy transformation from college athletics into being a high school coach, into being a middle school coach. All this was a path, and I'm pretty sure it was the path that God had for me. I'm Stan Cole, and our guest today on Tales from the Creek has been Barbara Fox. Thank you, Barbara, for sharing your Tales from the Creek. 
Thank you, Stan, for inviting me.